brotherly, steadily. They commend me for recovering quickly. They say it's because I was young. My brain wasn't set yet, so I adapted to the change. They say, we want you to forget about it. It was a bad time, so let's just not think about it. But they don't know the secrets my pillow keeps. Tear stains that remain standing through countless trips through the washing machine. Stains that years upon years cannot hope to remove, let alone detergent. They don't know what I've told the wind, what heartaches, what revelations, what whispers that are blown away on a traveling current. The wind carries words that fade out naturally, but these echo and reverberate within the halls of my heart. They don't know recovery isn't a one-time occurrence. It isn't reaching remission after five years when statistically relapse is much less likely. It isn't ticking a box and happily moving on as if nothing had happened. I was the one to face the pitfalls of mortality quite young. I was the one to think, today might be easier if I just don't wake up tomorrow. I was the one to accept cancer. The splitting headaches that screamed danger. The ignorant child that ignored her own body's signals. The ultimate trip to the ER for diagnosis and the ensuing year-long treatment plan. A malignant, aggressive brain tumor that blatantly challenged my bid at a stable point. And during treatment's course, I had to learn to recognize myself in different situations. Where's Waldo? Molded. The boy in the striped shirt and glasses became a girl prone in the back seat from the fever during panic car rides to the hospital. He became a child lying face down while a gray radiation machine worried about her. She was given a headset to block out the noise. It didn't help. Moved into a home for pediatric cancer patients. Read up on brochures on all the new hats I could wear after all my hair fell out. Hey, isn't this one pretty? Radiation became the invisible hand yanking my hair out strand by strand. It worked at night, a demon torturing a broken soul. When morning came, I found the results of its nocturnal work. Black locks of my own hair detached, lying on the pillow like corpses in a morgue. Oh, she's such a good patient, the most well-behaved one here. Yes, doctor. I will sit quietly while the intern massacres my arm with an IV needle. I will go to weekly sessions of drug injection where the assistant tells bad puns. I will not complain when you need to draw my blood. I will not cry when the radiation machine jabs into my side. I will not make a sound. I will not bother you. Because I'm the most well-behaved patient. The good girl. It's been years, but it doesn't get better. Sometimes it gets worse. Sometimes people laugh when I can't catch a ball. I hear their snickers when I ask the professor to repeat himself for the third time. Sometimes these judgments make me falter, make me trip over my own blundering feet. Sometimes The doctors in white haunt my dreams. I see him gravely closing the doors 
drawing the curtains shut to grant some meager privacy. He's stalling. I see his mouth open, soundless. I watch my family crumple to the ground beside my bed, one by one, falling leaves on a windy day. Sometimes I jolt awake screaming. But all the episodes, all the depressing moments, get easier to deal with. It's not about forgetting. There is no running from this. There is no running from yourself. It's learning to understand and learning to love. The powerlessness and incapacity, the reliance on my parents and my doctors left me aching to change something, left me wanting to become capable, powerful. It left me a striking independence. The eagerness to be a good girl, a bother to no one, became a gentle introversion. I am comfortable alone, and I am content with myself. No, I don't wish this never happened to me. I don't wish for the memories to fade, for the scars to disappear. I am who I am for different reasons, for rare reasons but for reasons nonetheless. I am a human with a past. My feet may not take me in a straight line, and I may move too slowly or sprint too quickly. It's a long, long road, and it's here for me. So I'll take it, brotherly, steadily and one step at a time.